welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about polyps let's write here polyps the polyps in the gastrointestinal tract so how many types of polyps are there see the polyps are you know the polyps right those mushroom shaped growths the extensions okay that small small little dangling things that are present in the intestines okay so the polyps are mainly classified into two types what are they the first type of polyps are called as the non neoplastic polyps and second one are neoplastic polyps okay non neoplastic and neoplastic polyps see what are the non neoplastic polyps non neoplastic polyps means these polyps won't turn into cancers okay these polyps their risk of turning into cancers is very 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 less okay they usually won't turn into cancers but neoplastic polyps they are at a risk of turning into cancers okay they have a potential to turn into cancers so non neoplastic polyps and neoplastic polyps so which type of polyps are non neoplastic polyps see non neoplastic polyps include inflammatory polyps okay inflammatory polyps see because of some local inflammation in the intestines okay the mucosa is going to be little like you know protruded into the lumen okay so which can be seen in ulcerative colitis also okay so it's just because of some inflammation the mucosa is getting little protruded into the lumen that's the, those are the inflammatory polyps they usually like you know they won't turn into cancers next hyperplastic polyps okay hyperplastic polyps and the last one is hamartomatous polyps hamartomatous polyps so what exactly are these hamartomatous polyps what is a hamartoma we'll discuss about that but non neoplastics include inflammatory polyps hyperplastic polyps and hamartomatous polyps and what are the examples of neoplastic polyps which polyps can turn into cancers so the neoplastic polyps they include okay neoplastic polyps they include tubular adenoma see wherever you see the word adenoma especially in the region of this uh, like you know polyps see this adenomas the adenomatous polyps will turn into cancers okay see tubular adenoma villus villus adenoma now itself i am telling you when compared to the tubular adenoma villus adenomas have more risk of turning into cancers okay so tubular adenoma villus adenoma next type is both tubulo villus based on how they are appearing on the histology so whether they are appearing like a tube uh, like in a, with, like they are appearing like, like a tube or whether they are appearing, appearing like a villi the finger shape projections on the histology so they are classified into different different types so tubular adenomas villus adenomas and tubulo villus adenomas tubulo villus adenomas next in what other conditions you can have neoplastic polyps see there is something called as sessile serrated adenoma sessile serrated adenoma okay sessile serrated adenoma and there is a condition called as familial adenomatous polyposis fap okay fap means familial familial okay in the families it's running in the families adenomatous again see there is a word adenoma okay adenomatous polyposis where at least minimum 100 polyps will be there okay at least minimum 100 polyps will be seen in the intestine that's also a diagnostic criteria at least minimum 100 polyps should be present so the important point what i want you to know is see wherever you see the word adenoma okay see adenoma so adenomatous polyps are neoplastic adenomatous polyps are neoplastic so in this slide what we have discussed the polyps are the types of polyps there are neoplastic polyps and non neoplastic polyps non neoplastic polyps are inflammatory polyps hyperplastic polyps hamartomatous polyps and neoplastic polyps you know it okay all you know more things see under hamartomatous polyps again there is one more classification what are the different types of hamartomatous polyps which are present that we will discuss one by one slowly okay now after discussing this see in this video i'll be also adding a few more mcqs okay clinically uh, like you know the clinical questions related to the polyps topic 
now look here just look into this question okay look into this question see a 50 year old a 50 year old woman comes to the office with uh, for a preventive examination okay just she is coming for a preventive examination she feels well and has no ongoing symptoms she is absolutely all right she is not not having any like symptoms just just came for the regular screening preventive thing okay so medical and family histories are unremarkable the patient does not use tobacco or alcohol blood pressure is 132 by 76 okay almost normal pulse is 72 normal bmi 25 kg per meter square normal physical examination is normal the patient is up to date on breast and cervical screening usually 50 years we will go for the screening right breast, breast screening cervical screening colorectal screening we usually go for that okay but has not undergone colon cancer screening see the colon cancer okay the polyps the colon cancer is going to be especially seen in older age groups 50 60 70 years okay 60 years usually the mean age okay but she is not going for the regular colon screening she is referred for colonoscopy okay she has now gone for the colonoscopy during which a single colon polyp is discovered there is a one single polyp that's there in the colon that cute little guy is there in the colon dangling okay the polyp is removed okay we have removed the polyp and sent for the microscopic examination which of the following pathological findings would be associated with the greatest risk of malignant transformation so presence of what suggests there is a highest risk of malignant transformation there is a polyp single polyp is there and you have sent it to the histo histopath now in this histopath presence of what tells you that this is at a risk of turning into cancer okay now option c one centimeter sessile hyperplastic polyp see hyperplastic polyps are they cancerous no they are not neoplastic sessile lymphoid polyps no they are also not tubular see tubular adenomatous polyp adenomatous adenomatous means risk of cancer and villous adenomatous polyp this is also so i have said you when compared to the tubular villous adenomatous polyps have more chance to turn into cancer when compared to villus, tubulo villus have more chance, something like that, okay. So, this is the best answer, okay. Now, the third one, pedunculated hematomatous polyps. Hematomatous polyps don't turn into cancer. So, the best option here is this one, okay. Two centimeters, villus adenomatous polyps have highest risk of turning into cancer, okay. So, one thing, it should be a neoplastic polyp and it should be bigger in size the more the size of the polyp more chances of it turning into cancer more size means more growth is happening right so more chance that it can turn into cancer it can turn into cancer so increasing the polyp size is the most important characteristic that correlates with the malignant risk mcq okay the increase in the size size as well as the type okay so you can see here the villus adenomas are more likely to undergo malignant transformation okay so answer is this one Okay, so this one, sir. Villus adenomas are more likely to undergo malignant transformation than tubular adenomas. When compared to tubular adenomas, villus adenomas. Okay, so as I have already taught you, see common, the common colonic polyps. So neoplastic, under neoplastic, see sessile serrated polyps, adenomatous polyps, adenomatous include tubular, tubular villus. Uh, villus, tubular, villus, tubular villus. Also, there is a condition called as familial endomatous polyposis where there are like you know, lots and lots of polyps are there and they are, those polyps are also neoplastic polyps. And non-neoplastic polyps include hyperplastic polyps, inflammatory polyps and hematomatous polyps. Okay. Now, after this, the next MCQ that I want to discuss here. Okay, the next MCQ that I want to discuss here. Look into this. See, a 60-year-old woman comes to the office with persistent profuse mucoid diarrhea okay 60 year old so you already know 60 year olds are at a risk of developing the colorectal cancer polyps first polyps and colorectal cancer so there is a diffuse mucoid diarrhea why mucoid diarrhea mucus mucus means adenomatous polyps adenomas means what mucus production now she is having mucoid diarrhea okay despite not eating much she is not eating anything for the past two days but she is having this mucoid diarrhea her diarrhea was not decreased, okay, but she has no other symptoms. The patient has not had age-appropriate colon cancer screening. Age-appropriate colon cancer screening is not done in this female, okay. Family history is unremarkable. 
family history is like negative for any such cancers she does not use tobacco alcohol illicit drugs vital exam vital findings and cardiopulmonary examination are normal the abdomen is soft and non distended soft and non distended okay there is no hepatosplenomegaly laboratory study shows hypokalemia okay hypokalemia is there and microcytic anemia is there now she is having anemia and my, like microcytic anemia as well as hypokalemia so colonoscopy reveals now when you have performed the colonoscopy there is a 2.5 cm cauliflower like mass in the sigmoid colon yes now there is a polyp okay now there is a polyp in the colon the mass is resected and the histopath of the lesion is shown below here which of the following is most likely diagnosis of the patient now you look at this and tell me sir we have taken the biopsy and this is what you are looking at the microscope now tell me what exactly is looking like it's looking like a fingers right fingers means what villus villi means like finger like projection so this is villus adenoma more risk of cancer villus adenomas more risk of turning into cancers okay so here definitely the answer is it's a villus adenoma okay now let's see what are the important points which you should know adenomatous polyps okay adenomatous polyps are either tubular villus or tubular villus okay depending on the histological appearance depending on the histological appearance i have said you it can be a tubular it can be villus or it can be tubular villus both combination okay see villus adenomatous polyps tend to be larger villus means they will they will be usually larger and they are sessile means they do not have any stalk okay they are sessile they do not have any stalk they are not just dangling they are attached to the wall there is no stalk and more profusely dysplastic than tubular when compared to the tubular villus will show more dysplasia more disorganized growth so more risk of turning into cancers villus adenomas can cause secretory diarrhea villus adenoma is causing secretory diarrhea why because of increased mucus production villus tumors villus adenomas will produce more and more mucus that will cause secretory diarrhea so whenever there is a diarrhea that diarrhea is going to cause see, mucin excessive excessive mucin is getting produced so mucin is also protein right so the pure protein is getting lost in the the diarrhea the protein is going out of the body so that will cause hypoproteinemia okay and hypokalemia because there is severe diarrhea the patient is losing the potassium out of the body that will cause hypokalemia so usually these patients who are have who are having this villus adenomas are going to have hypokalemias as well as hypoproteinemias okay so done completed now after this let's discuss about the first type of uh, a tumor say this is a hyperplastic polyp okay now let's discuss about a hyperplastic polyp now if you ask me sir how can we say this is a hyperplastic polyp see hyperplastic polyps okay uh, usually seen in age group of 60 years okay usually they are seen in 60 years now tell me hyperplastic polyps will they turn into cancers no they do not turn into cancers they are um, non neoplastic polyps okay they are non neoplastic polyps usually seen in 60 years of age point is what is the most common site the most common site is the rectum okay hyperplastic polyps are going to be seen in the rectum now how can we say this is a hyperplastic polyp sir see always look at the top sir in the top you are having this crepts which are serrated okay they are having more serrations right see there are serrated upper crepts okay but when you go down okay when you go down see how the crepts are now there are basal narrow uniform crepts the basal crepts are narrow and uniform see look here they are more uniform okay there is no serrations okay they are uniform like this okay here also in this image also look the upper crepts are serrated okay the upper crepts are serrated and the basal crepts are more uniform so when you see such a type of histology okay when you see such a histological picture it is an example of hyperplastic polyp so serrated upper crepts okay and narrow uniform basal crepts 
is just because of some hyperplasia happening. Okay, so hyperplastic polyps, like this, hyperplastic polyps. And never forget the hyperplastic polyps, not only to cancer. Now look here. So what is this? Now you see more serrations, right? When compared to here, see the serrations. Here, here one serration, here one serration. Okay. But when compared to this, here you can see more serrations. See, serrated, serrated, serrated crepes, serrated, serrated, serrated. So everywhere there is serrated crepes. Now the serrations are extending till to the base. The serrations are extending till to the base. Okay. And in the base also, what you are seeing here, if the serrations are extending to the base of the crepe, that is the one thing. And in the base especially, the serrations are going to be boot shaped. Okay. If you look here, this is a very classical image that can ask in your exam. See, see here there is a boot shaped crept. Okay. So, the serrations are inverted T shaped or boot shaped. This is also the image based question that can come in your exam. See, this is looking like an inverted T. It is looking like an inverted T. So, what is this polyp? So, definitely this is uh, not a, a hyperplastic polyp. Okay, definitely this is not a hyperplastic polyp. This is sessile serrated polyp. Sessile serrated polyps. Let me write here. Sessile serrated polyp. See, so, sessile serrated polyps, what are the important points which you need to know? See, so, serrations extending to the base. Serrations extend to the base. And how the serrations are, especially in the base, the serrations are going to be boot shaped. Are inverted T shaped. Okay, boot shaped are inverted T shaped serrations are going to be seen. Now tell me, sir, sessile serrated polyps, they are going to be seen, or I, I should say they are going to be neoplastic or they are going to be non-neoplastic. Sir, they are neo neoplastic polyps. Okay, they are neoplastic polyps. Right? Next, after this, look here. I am going to discuss about the hematomatous polyps. Okay, hematomatous polyps. Sir, what exactly are these hematomatous polyps? First of all, you should know what exactly is a hematoma. Okay. See, there are different types of hematomatous polyps. Okay, hematomatous polyps are seen in, I should say, hematomatous polyps are seen in multiple conditions, different, different conditions. Okay. So, Matus polyps. So, what exactly is a hamartoma, sir? A hamartoma kya hai? It's a mass of matured. Okay, hamartoma is a mass of matured, not immature, but matured, but disorganized growth. No proper organization in the tissue architecture, but disorganized. growth okay disorganized growth native to its origin okay native to the tissue which means see in the colon if there is a hematomatous polyp see there is no bone growing over there usually there is something called as teratoma most of the students will confuse between hematoma and teratoma teratoma is totally different this is a hematoma which means in that polyp same local intestinal contents will be there, same mucosa, some mucosa, same, same things, but in a disorganized way. It is a mature tissue, mature cells will be there, but just a disorganized growth of a tissue that is called as a hematoma. So, hematomatous polyps means polyp is there, but a disorganized tissue is there. Okay, that tissue is also local to its normal native, native tissue. Okay, no bone is growing there, no teeth is growing there, or no hair is growing there. Okay. In teratomas, disorganized growth that too different tissue will be present. In a teratoma, hairs will be present, teeth will be present, bones will be present. That is a teratoma, that is a totally different thing. These are the hematomas. Now, what are the conditions in which you will see hematomatous polyps? In which conditions are hematomas are seen? See, there is a condition called as Peutz-Jeghers syndrome. Okay. So, what is this Peutz-Jeghers syndrome? See, in this Peutz-Jeghers syndrome, the one important point which I want you to know is, look, 
there are gastrointestinal hematomatous polyps i have discussed with you gastrointestinal hematomatous polyps we have discussed okay so there is a mucocutaneous pigmentation okay in the mucocutaneous like in the mucous membranes and in the skin also there is going to be pigmentation okay that image also i will show you so one thing if a patient is having Peutz-Jeghers syndrome there will be mucocutaneous pigmentation not only that the patient is also going to have the hematomatous polyps in the gi tract and see there is a risk of these patients are at a risk of developing colorectal pancreatic and gynecological cancers okay these patients are at a risk of developing cancers okay next next condition is called as juvenile polyposis juvenile polyposis usually these patients will have polyp in the rectum okay that is called as the juvenile rectal polyp see in this juvenile polyposis what the patient is going to have this is the condition what is the problem i will explain it so in this juvenile polyposis condition the, the patient is going to have yes hematopoietous polyps in the gastrointestinal tract especially in the rectum okay multiple places will be there so digestive hematomatous polyps will be there and these patients are also at risk of developing gastrointestinal cancers so the next condition where you can see the hematomatous polyps cowden syndrome cowden okay cowden syndrome see in this cowden syndrome again look the patient is going to have hematomatous colonic polyps again hematomas so hematomatous polyps are seen in these three conditions not only in these three conditions there are some other conditions also that i will, I will give you the list see putzeiger syndrome juvenile polyposis cowden syndrome these are the three conditions where you can see the hematomatous polyps hematomatous polyps okay in this cowden syndrome see the patient is going to have a risk of thyroid cancer breast cancer uterine cancer okay the patient is going to have trichelomomas okay that is the skin lesions i will discuss separately about the one one condition i will discuss about the putzeiger syndrome juvenile polyposis cowden syndrome separately but this is just an introduction now if you ask me sir why what is the reason for the putzeiger syndrome or the putzeiger syndrome what why the reason for the putzeiger syndrome stk11 gene mutation so the gene mutation which is associated is stk11 gene mutation okay see how the putzeiger syndrome is going to look like okay see it's looking like a branching right a beautiful branching arborizing network okay this i will discuss again okay now look here so this juvenile polyposis in the juvenile polyposis if you look see there is cystically dilated gland cystically dilated glands are present and what is the gene mutation smad 4a okay smad 4a gene mutation and bmpr 1a gene mutation sorry not smad 4a smad 4 that's it smad 4 smad 4 and bmpr 1a gene mutation smad 4 and bmpr 1a gene mutations there it is stk11 gene mutation stk11 gene mutation will cause putzeiger syndrome stk means serine threonine kinase okay serine threonine kinase 11 gene mutation here bmpr 1a gene mutation smad 4a gene mutation and cow den cow den okay cow den so i used to remember like 10 cow 10 cow 10 so that is p10 gene mutations so p10 gene mutations can lead to cow den syndrome cow den syndrome so in all these three conditions the one thing is common that is hematomatous polyps what are hematomas disorganized tissue which is local okay native in origin disorganized and native tissue okay guys now we have discussed up till the hematomatous polyps in the next video we'll be discussing in detail about individual hematomatous polyps like what will be seen in the Butzeiger syndrome, what will be seen in the juvenile polyposis syndrome, Cowden syndrome, tuberosclerosis, okay, all these hematomatous polyps will be discussed in the next video. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.